Hello everyone, I am so, so excited that you're here right now because we are joined by the amazing Ali Kazaza. Ali, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, thank you so much for having me. I love talking about this stuff. I am so excited for everyone to hear, firstly, your story um, of what you have achieved is amazing. So for everyone listening, she started a podcast show that has just become incredible, The Purpose Show with Ali Kazaza, and everyone should check it out. And in two years, it's had six million downloads, which is a phenomenal achievement. Ali's business at the moment, she has, she sells like a lower cost products, I suppose, and it's not like thousands of dollars. So her lowest cost product is $9. Her most expensive product is $197. Me and Ali are in a mastermind. And so Ali was doing a presentation the other week and my mind was blown listening to you talk and listening to just the amazing things that you've achieved and how you've done it. And so for example, on this on this call, Ali was like, I had a $70,000 day selling a $99 product. <laughs> I think we were all like, oh my gosh, like this is amazing. Um, you obviously run a multi seven figure business with these with like lower cost products. And, um, and one of the key things that really stood out to me when we we're chatting on that mastermind call was that you just said that you'd got so good at building an engaged community. And I just think like so much of success now and is business, especially these types of businesses where we're selling, where we are showing up, we've got a message to share, we've got like a voice that we want to get out there. Like we have to be able to build amazing com communities to create success. So I'm really excited for us to talk about this. Ali's actually going to talk about her five part party cocktail. It's a breakdown of how to build an engaging community. So it's going to be amazing. Um, but for everyone listening, can we just kind of take them back to the beginning of your story so they get to hear you and like this entrepreneurial journey that you've been on to get to this point today, which is just amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, I feel like when people talk about this with me, they hear like, oh, the $70,000 day and how did you do? But it's like, there is so much that I experienced that led up to that. It's the kind of like the whole, like in your mind, it's an overnight success and you're like, well, there was like five plus years of building and like figuring it out. So my business started, um, gosh, in, in 2015, I had the idea and started working on it. And then it really kind of um, didn't get any traction until 2016, the fall of 2016, um, when we I had written an intentionally viral post, which I can also share if you want the link to that breakdown and like oh, what yeah. helped that would be amazing. Um, and it did it took a couple months but it did it did in fact go viral and it was trending over the um first hillary trump debate of 2016 um on twitter and facebook and it was so crazy it was like this explosion that i had been waiting to happen for so long like building and and trying and showing up and and so i think there's a lot of those unseen things that entrepreneurs need to understand take work but um yeah my business started just from such humble beginnings, we were like, my family was really struggling and I wanted to start a business so that my husband could leave his job that he hated and um, we could be together more. We were always separate and we just, it was like paycheck to paycheck and just really hard. Yeah. Um, and so I started my business just to like make, I, I always had the goal, like I just want to make like $5,000 a month. That's all I want. You know, it's that whole beginning where you're like, if I could just have that, I'd be happy. And now I'm like, you know, if we have like a less than six figure month, I'm like, oh my gosh, like yeah. what happened? <laughs> <You know? laughs> And so it's funny how you just kind of just up and up, you know, not yeah. the entrepreneurial journey. But yeah, today, um, The Purpose Show has one episode a week, which I think is important to mention because sometimes people say, oh, I have 30 million downloads, but you have an episode every day for like six years, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, the Purpose Show has one episode a week at this point, I'm thinking of changing that. Um, but yeah, six million downloads and uh, um, my Facebook group is like, almost 50,000 really highly engaged women. And it's a happy space on the internet. It's not overwhelming for me to run that. And um, everything is just really exploded because of the community that I have built into my business. I didn't start a business, I started a movement. And I think that's an important It's such a, re I do agree with you. It's such an important distinction. I often say, focus on building a community, not a business, because that's what we're doing. We are building communities. Because if you can build an engaged community around your message and what you have to share, then you, you'll you find a way to make it successful. Um, so I really love that. So, so back in 2015, when you got started with it all, firstly, how did the idea come about? Because obviously you had the desire to want to change and you didn't want your husband to be working a job that he didn't enjoy. 
but um, also tell everyone a little bit what your business is about and who you are serving and um, and yeah like how you made the decision like where did that idea come from so it came I think like all good stories and like really like missions that people are passionate about it came from my own life story um, I had I have this hormonal disorder and so we I was told I couldn't have kids and so when we got married like we figured out that there that was indeed false but there was a tight window like if you're gonna do this like have them all right now and so my husband and I were like so young but we were like okay let's do it <laughs> so we had four kids in five years and so at one point I had three under three and they oh, were like all in diapers at once <laughs> and so it was like my life was like that so I I basically was at this point where I was feeling like really overwhelmed, of course, and really drained and like unhappy. And I was kind of circling the drain of depression. And I really like, I reached out to other moms that were ahead of me to be like, what can I do? Like, is this normal? Like, how can I get out of this? And basically the resounding message was like, you have a million kids and they're all really little. Like it's gonna be like basically a shit show until they're older and then it's harder in a different way. Like it was very discouraging. And my story really started from that. I, I wanted to find a way, like I believe that we're all here to live abundantly and to live fully and to live well. And I, I was hearing this message that like motherhood is an exception to that. And I don't like that. And I just can't believe that I would be serving a God that would create us like that. Like, oh, motherhood sucks. Like it's so hard and like there's good parts, but it's like really a shit show and like everything else is, you know, good. And so I just, I basically was seeking this abundance in the trenches of raising babies. And I started to just hack away at what was feeling heavy. I decluttered like all of my stuff. I got rid of all the clutter in our home. I made things as simple and essential as possible and really found my life changed. And I, and I started to blog and share this process. Like, okay, I decluttered my house and this is what I'm feeling. Like my depression is gone and it's not coming back. And my kids are actually playing with their toys and getting along. And I feel like I have extra time and I have three babies. Like, how is this possible? And I started, um, I started blogging and, and writing and working and I just really was passionate about sharing. And then I started doing things in my schedule and in my marriage and in my life and wellness. And I really started seeing that simple is the way to everything. And as I shared that, women were like coming to me and flocking to my blog and like wanting more and more and more. And so they were asking me for something, like to put everything together so they could buy it and like have like an alley guide to a simplified motherhood. And so I, the business, I had kind of been circling around that for a while and doing nothing with it because, you know, life was busy and I didn't know what that looked like. And I think hitting a wall in my personal life with our finances was what pushed me over the edge, like kind of that tilting point that needs to happen to where you finally yeah. stop doing what you've been doing and decide to go a different way. Um, and I wrote an ebook and I spent so much time and energy on it, Carrie. Like I really poured my heart into this thing. And I was like, I'm going to self publish this through Amazon and I'm going to be a millionaire. And it literally, like, I did all this stuff. I took a photo of the cover and designed everything myself and I launched it. And it barely made enough for me to, like, pay my utility bill. Like, it it sucked. Like, it was just, like, an internet fart. Like, it was nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it was so embarrassing and so humbling. And I realized that I had actually made some sales, but the cost was so low. You know, it was like, I need something more. Like I need something that I can charge like a hundred dollars plus for like something new. And I was researching, researching, researching. And I found um, this girl doing courses before they were like, really everyone knows what courses are now, but that she had kind of pioneered this idea. And I learned from her, it was Mariah Cause of oh, yeah. Femme And she was just like one of the first ones that was really making this happen. And she shared something about how she had a $70,000 month. And I had just never seen that much money, even on a screen that somebody could make that. And it was just unbelievable to me. And so I was just a, like, so attracted to this idea. And that was why I, I pivoted. And I was like, I'm going to make a course. Um, and I think it's important to mention too. I know I'm like kind of going on and on, but I think it's so important to mention that I 
studied my audience. I polled them, I surveyed them, I asked them questions. I pre-sold the course and had the first group make the course alongside me. I saved up all my money and I flew to California back home because we lived in the Midwest at this time temporarily for my husband's job. I flew back home to California to where I knew people and I purged their homes for free. I went to my mom's friend who had been a widow and was ready to get rid of her husband, her late husband's things. And I sat on her floor and let her cry on me as I basically was a therapist working through the stuff with her. Um, I studied a, a single mom with 11 kids and helped her purge her house. Um, I did all kinds of things and I studied like, what is the problem with people? Because decluttering is the first pillar in my business. That's the first step. Then we can move on to lightening kind of the other things in motherhood. Mm -hmm. And so I studied clutter and I made this course called Your Uncluttered Home. And that was the result of all my studying. And slowly but surely I got better and better and better. And I raised the price from $39 and it's now it's listed on my site as $297, but that's just so I can offer it at $197 all the time. Um, I think it's amazing listening to your story and like how it's evolved. And I think it's just really interesting to hear because I think, like you said at the beginning, sometimes we see success stories and we feel like they happened overnight, but you don't actually see the behind the scenes of like the work that someone's put in and the figuring out and the, you know, doing stuff for free and like really getting your hands dirty with it all and like, um, and listening to your audience and learning from your audience and doing all that stuff. But it's like, if we just show up with a desire to want to grow and to serve our audience and to learn and to listen and we just keep doing that stuff like it just it's like the breadcrumbs appear like the little the you know it just the whole pathway appears for us and you just kind of all of a sudden you're like how did I get here how did I create so much success but then looking back connecting it all up you realize oh yeah I can see how this has like led me to this point um exactly. oh, I just love it I just love hearing these stories I feel like it's amazing. And I, think, and I think like like that started my business like and I haven't really left that like I was in it with them and I got like you said like I got my hands dirty and I was down in that like dirt with them I had graduated from that time of my life things were lighter for me I was better like I wasn't feeling like I hated you know my days and I wasn't overwhelmed anymore but I went backward and I got down in there with them and I was talking to them and hearing from them and supporting them and um i've had times where i would do like webinars and i would cry because i would see the comments coming in of these women like being where i was and just feeling like oh no like i do not want you to feel that way no like i i was so in it with them and i think that that is such a crux of creating a community and a, and a, like I, I always say like don't start a business start a movement and don't build an audience build a tribe yeah because there's such a definitive difference there. And I still do things like that. That energy in the beginning is still in my business. And Carrie, the only times that I have had times in my business where I was scared, like we were struggling and the revenue was like dipping and things were not happening is when I stopped remembering her, the one that needs me, the one that I'm there for and what she's going through. When I removed myself from really helping her things don't work as well because the tribe leader has removed herself her and, and i think that this it's not about like not delegating and not automating i have i'm a delegation automation queen but it is about your heart and the energy behind the work you're putting out in a delegated automated way even if that's your business model is to be kind of removed yeah. but still like the heart is there and they can she can feel that from me and so she buys because she believes in me and what i'm saying and I built this community around a movement. Does that make sense? It makes a hundred percent sense to me. And I feel like I have experienced that. Like I have experienced taking that step back. And I remember, I mean, over the past few years, I suppose, like my focus was so much on the back end of FEA and the operations and team side of things that I really became so disconnected from the voice of it all, the message and why I even started it in the first place. And like, it had such a huge impact on the engagement and the, I remember we did this launch once and it was just awful. And I was like, what the heck is that going on right now? Like, this is crazy. And then I, I was like looking at all the things and, and then I realized it's me. Like, I can't expect to have a successful launch if I am not showing up for my audience in the way I was. And it's one thing to be like, okay, here are three tips. It's another thing to put your heart and soul into that content and for it to be real. And like, you're actually showing up like you said like on such an energetic level and they can feel that like that is different and i think that's what 
creates really successful audiences. Um, okay. So, so talking about or like tribes, like you say. <laughs> so, talking about that, how building engaged, engaging communities. How did you realize like that's what you needed to do, and how did you start doing it? Because I think one of the biggest things people are stuck with is like, but how, how do I do that? How do I, how do I actually? I've got my message. I know what I want to share, but like, how do I actually build a community around it? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to get into the party cocktail at this point, because this is kind of like the template, which I would, okay. So recently, like not a long time ago, like maybe six months ago, I was asked to kind of like teach and dissect how I've done what I've done. And it's kind of that whole thing where you're like, being asked by people that you respect and admire and it's like intimidating. And then they say like, can you tell us how you did what you did? And you're like, you're so in the trenches and you're so like just head down focusing and just doing the thing that you're like, you look back and you're like, I don't know. Yeah. So I was like, I have to figure this out. So I went back and I, I mean, oh my gosh, I don't know how many hours I spent, but for weeks I was obsessed with like studying my my past and studying my process and what I've done and I it was so it was such a light bulb moment I felt like an archaeologist like just <laughs> like finding like a full set of bones like I was like this is it like oh my gosh people haven't seen this before um there was a very specific always the same template that I kind of just naturally applied to everything my podcast um, even my emails and the way I email my list is very unique and different than I see anyone else doing it. And really it's just an energetic difference, but there's still, a, there's still strategy, right? Like mm -hmm. even like intuition and energy can be strategic. Um, and like my, my, my podcast, the Facebook groups, the challenges that I run, like I have this challenge called declutter like a mother that we run annually. And it is just the biggest deal. It's been, it's been trending before when it's like about to start. Um, we had, we've had like a couple of celebrities join in and like post about it. Like it's just a, it's fun and it's such a big deal. Everybody wants to join. But when you're asked like, well, how do you do that? It, it you know, it's like, I don't know. So I found this, I found this template that was being done over and over again, the same way. And, um, I call it the five part party, party cocktail because that's what I'm doing in my business is I'm creating fun. I'm creating energy. Um, we're all problem solvers in our businesses, right? Like that's what we do. We put out fires and we solve problems for people. And so the problem for my audience is really sad, kind of heavy. I mean, I deal with like postpartum depression. I'm dealing with people like getting divorced because they just can't handle their life. Like they don't really want to get divorced, but they're just like done. Um, I get messages on a weekly basis from moms that are about to leave their kids, like just give up and walk away. Um, it's heavy. And so I'm like, okay, like this is so much more than clutter. This is so much more than all this, but like, how can we make this fun and get them involved? Like, I want them to catch the energy that I have now that I have hindsight over that hard time in my life. And so I create little parties and celebrations all throughout my business over, you know, around different missions and different things that we're doing. So this is what it kind of looks like. And you can ask me whatever, and I'll clarify anything. Um, the five part party cocktail is first a message and that message must be delivered with complete authenticity. It can't be like a preachy message or like a, I know so much, I'm the expert. Um, let me just like come down to your level and just tell you what I always do. Like you can't be perfect. Um, you have to be relatable, but still remaining the expert. So an example of that for me to help all your listeners is um, I have to be ahead of them to teach them. Right. And I am ahead of them, but to be honest, I'm so far beyond where they're at in their lives. I sometimes feel like, man, this is not relatable. Like I'm just not there anymore. I don't think about the things they think about anymore. Like I have up leveled in my life so much. I'm like, not my person's person anymore, yeah. you know? Yeah, I know what you mean. And so it looks for me like going back and remembering talking to them a lot. I read the comments. I read the DMS. I see some emails. My team shares stuff with me that I'm removed from. And so I go down there with them and I'm like, look, I know that you feel this. women love the word feel. There's a book called why she buys that everyone that sells to women should read. <laughs> they love the word feel. So I know you feel like this and you feel like you're missing out on this and this, and you feel like, when is it going to get better? You all these things. 
and I get that, this is my story, and this is where I'm at now. So I got down in there with her and made her feel like she's not stupid, mm -hmm. she's not failing, she's not bad at this, she's just overwhelmed. And so the, the message is delivered with authenticity, like this is the way you're feeling right now and it doesn't have to be that way. Then part two of the cocktail is a mission. The mission is we are going to fix this. We're gonna get out. And step one is this in your home. So it's a clutter like a mother, the challenge. It's we're gonna get all like a big chunk of surface clutter off your plate, off your back. No more heavy weight when you walk into your home and you hate being there. And there's just like a running to-do list in your head because you see all the crap everywhere. That's the mission. We're gonna declutter like a mother. Like, have you seen the promos for that? Like the track bag and I'm like, like war, like yelling. <laughs> it's so fun. Like they love it. I love that. And so that's the mission. And then part three is a shared enemy. So that could be for me, it could be clutter. It could be overwhelm. It could be hot mess mom culture that says like, this is just the way that it is. And if you're, if you have, you know, your ish together and you're annoying and you get made fun of as in the mom community for you, you know, it could be, um, I don't know, like a messy back end in your business and yeah. you're gonna have a challenge to help them clean that up, whatever, it's a shared enemy. So the message delivered with authenticity, a mission, what we're gonna accomplish together and a shared enemy. Because in a shared enemy, this is very like story brand esque because you're having that shared enemy, you have to have something to rally up against together and that builds tribe, right? Mm -hmm. And then the fourth part is a done for you plan. So it's really a done for them plan that you put together. So in, going back to declutter like a mother, I create a calendar for them that walks them through like what we're going to talk about every day and the time of the day the video is going to air. It's a premiered video that's pre-recorded, so I don't have to show up live in that way. Um, and that's the done for them plan. So another challenge that I do comes with a workbook. Um, it could be a cheat sheet, anything that's like basically you're taking the brain work out of it for them and making it easy. All they have to do is show up and learn. Yeah. How can you do that for them? And then the fifth part is a party location. Every party has a location. So this could be a Facebook group. I love pop-up groups. We do a pop-up group for Declutter Like a Mother. Um, so outside of your main group for a specific, so you're saying everybody is in this group having fun, but hey, we're gonna do this thing together. We have this shared enemy, we have this mission, and I have this done for you plan. Everybody that wants to partake in this, come over here for two weeks. We're gonna do this over here in this group together. So it's kind of signifying like, we're pulling out pieces of the tribe that want to do this. Cause not everybody will at the same time that you're gonna run something. Um, and so I find that that pop-up group creates this like temporary party that they know they're, it's gonna end and it's, they're gonna have to leave. So they take advantage while it's there. Yeah. Um, and then also, you know, as well as I do, Carrie, when you do something like that, like what do people say at the end? They're like, I don't want this to end. Yeah. I wanna say everyone's so nice. And you're like, you can say, join my membership. Yeah. So the party's continuing over here. So does that make sense? Yeah. It's like you're creating that those are the elements of a party that nobody wants to leave and they don't leave they buy the course because it comes with the student community and they want to continue the party it's like that whole thing of selling them what they selling them what they want giving them what they need yeah when they get in the course is going to change their life but if i were to go over like lesson one is about the junk drawer like nobody's gonna no one cares yeah <laughs> but giving them like what they need and selling them what they want like the party the community and i just showed you how that feels with me and how I teach and what it's like to hang out with me and that you can continue, but you have to buy that. Yeah. I think it's really amazing that you just intuitively did that. Cause like, that is like some amazing like marketing skill set. But I think it's cause you pay so much attention to your audience and you're listening to them and you're hearing like what she needs, what she wants. And so you understand that on such a deep level that it just kind of oozes through what you're creating. And I, I do think like, I mean, that goes back to like being able to build a really strong community. It's like who's leading the community really intimately knows the people that are part of that community. How do you use that framework? So for example, you said you kind of use that framework for like everything you're creating. So if, do you do that with like when you create podcasts? And if so, what does that look like with a piece of content? Yeah. So with a podcast, the going back to the cocktail, the first element is a message delivered with authenticity. 
So obviously the subject for the episode, um, I definitely, I, I definitely spend time thinking of my episode ideas. I will have like a great episode idea, but it's not going to move the needle forward for her. Um, I'm very careful and aware of like, what is like a good idea for me because I'm at a different place in my life than she is now versus what's actually going to help her where she's at. Yeah. Um, and this is, I don't want this to sound like weird or anything, but it definitely has to do with like, I'm running a business. They are my business. I'm not B2B. So they're not. So there's a, a stark difference there. Um, it could have to do with lifestyle and money. Like my business is generating quite a bit of money. And so my lifestyle has reflected that and changed. So I have to be very aware of like, okay, what is, is this coming from where I'm at in my life? Then I might want to just like save that for when I talk about business or, you know, keep that for myself. Um, what's going to move the needle forward for her. So I think a lot of podcasters just get inspired and like dump out their ideas into episodes without really asking if this is going to help the listener specifically. Yeah. Um, and so I'm delivering that message, whatever it is with authenticity. And I really get real. The most popular message I get is I can't believe you shared that, but I'm so glad you did because I thought I was the only one. So I'll share things like, um, for example, uh, I share this story from like five years ago where I like screamed at one of my kids so bad because I was so stretched thin and overwhelmed and like not myself and depressed. I screamed at my kids so bad that I like popped a cord in my throat and like lost my voice. Oh my God. And, I, and that's embarrassing. But like I shared that and I said like realizing that I had literally like broke my vocal cords because I was screaming at my toddler. That's that's like verbal abuse. I don't want to be do like, I don't want to have a life set up where I have to like, Oh, be careful not to like scream so hard at your kids that you pop your throat yeah. open. Like, I don't want to live a life that leads to that. And that's hard for me to share. You bet I get nasty messages, even though it was five years ago and I don't do those things anymore, yeah. but that's kind of authentic raw stuff. I don't think that you have to like rip the covers off of everything and like stand naked in front of your audience. Yeah. But I think that the point is like, I'm really sharing. I'm sharing in a way that lets them know you are not the worst. You are not alone. Like I get it. And I think that that's the point that could be applied to any niche. Yeah. So do you uh, do like a done for you thing in the podcast episode? I know you link from your podcast episode and get those people to join your community on Facebook. So there's kind of that journey. So when people discover you, your podcast, then there's that invite, that call to action to come and like be part of it. and you know, take that next step into the community. Yeah, the so the mission is like reminding them that like things don't have to be this way. Um, and the mission is to change that. The shared enemy is whatever fits that episode. It could be overwhelm, it could be stress, it could be clutter, whatever. Um, and then the plan I made for you, the done for them plan is um, usually it's the action steps per episode. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I do and, and that's like the purpose show's main point is to get them to actually do the thing. Like I, people listen to podcasts all the time, you know, and then they walk away like that was really good, but they do nothing. Yeah. And so the done for them plan is I will sometimes just audibly give it to them and say, okay, here's the done for you plan that I created. This is what you're going to do. I want you to do this, this, and this by the end of the week. Like that's a done for them plan. It's really just connecting. Uh -huh. Sometimes the plan is a PDF. I want them to go and download. Sometimes it is just joining the Facebook group. Um, like we did an episode about friendship, women friendship and how they always go like so sour. And the done for them plan was there's a whole community of women and I bet you a lot of them live by you. Go and join. So it just, it's always about like what's applicable to that yeah. topic and it always changes. And then the, you know, the final step of the cocktail is the party, the location of the party. And that is sometimes a Facebook group. Sometimes it's a challenge. Like some of my challenges are automated. So I'll invite them to join. Yeah. Sometimes it's a course. Like I'll straight up pitch them on the podcast. I feel like nobody pitches on the podcast. Yeah. And it's like, there's a bunch of people listening to your show. Invite them into the next step. Yeah. Um, yeah. So or I, agree. Next, or I, I think I agree with you on that because I feel like we create so much stuff and we like the, the, what we, create that we're selling it's so valuable and so helpful and so so often I join like groups and I'm like just tell me what I can buy from you because I want to buy something from you and they're like hiding it from you and you're like stop hiding it from me and I think because yeah. it's like they're we like, get in our heads great. about selling it yeah yeah and I like I've even been I just did this yesterday I recorded um an episode that was literally the notes from a webinar and I'm straight up there's like a 20 minute pitch and I'm like 
crying. I'm so like, you have to get in here. It will change your life. Like that is going to come through into their earbuds yeah. and make money. Like I, I, I just feel like people need to stop having the regular podcast format that's so stiff and that's the same thing without any thought. Like my podcast doesn't sound very different than other people, but the energy and the intent behind it, it's generating me money. I'm not just collecting a bunch of, you know, freeloaders that don't really care. I'm giving them the energy about my mission. I'm getting them excited. I'm bringing them into my tribe. I'm giving them a done for them plan. I'm calling them into the next thing. I'm getting them on my list. I'm getting them in my courses. Like that's what, why do all the work for podcasting if you're not going to be intentional with it? Yeah. And I think that's the thing is that you want to, well, what makes really amazing communities is that they really want to be there and they're not just in it for all of the, like, well, I mean, some people can like take the free stuff and still be a really valuable part of the community, but like you, it's not people that aren't, they don't, they're not really interested. They don't really want to be there. It's like, you only want communities of people that truly want to show up and be there. And that's what makes them amazing because if you have a community full of the wrong people then it's not it's I've been I've been there like I've had hiccups where like that has kind of happened for a time or like really bad leads from ads and stuff because the messaging wasn't energetic it wasn't from the heart it was like done by somebody else for me yeah or whatever and it's just it's always better for us as the creative entrepreneur to come in and like cast vision and infuse something that we're delegating with energy and with our heart uh -huh. and then come back and check it. Um, Michael Hyatt calls it the 10, 80, 10 rule with the 10% up front. I'm casting vision. I'm telling you how I want it to feel. 80% is delegated. And then the last 10%, I check it before it goes out to everybody. And that's exactly what I do in my business. Yeah. So as you built your community, what has been like, Obviously, I, I do feel like just showing up and showing up in the right way from the heart with an understanding of who your audience are is probably the most important thing. Because um, mm -hmm. I, look, I look back on my own journey of like how I've built my community and I can't just pinpoint it on one thing necessarily. It's been like a buildup of like action and energy and intention that I've had and I've been so consistent with putting stuff out there. But I also know, for example, for me, I remember at one point, um, discovering Facebook ads and being like, oh, let's test this out. And then realizing, wow, this is a way to reach a hell of a lot more people a lot faster. And so Facebook ads has definitely played a big part of our strategy and has really helped um, to scale. And then obviously focusing on my email list and building that up and doing those things and focusing on those things has definitely helped me. Has there been things that you've done and strategies you've used, which have really helped you to reach more people? Yeah, I mean, we started using Facebook ads like a year and a half ago. Um, and it's been, it's been good, but like I said, it's only good when I, it's like, I don't want to sound like heady or anything, but it's only good when I'm involved in it because yeah. it's got to have that energy. Like I feel like a lot of people hire, like we were just talking about that before we recorded, yeah. um, they hire like firms to do stuff for them. And then it's like so much money that you're like, you do this. If I'm paying you this much, like you do it and like, you better show up but they don't sometimes. Yeah. And so you have to be involved with your messaging. And so the way that I've done that, honestly, Carrie is just like looking at the copy and, yeah. and having the gall to say like, this is not good. Yeah. This means you need to, and taking the five part party cocktail and applying it to every, every ad that I can or every yeah. ad um, sequence or funnel that I can. Yeah. Um, and those perform a lot better, but up until that point, like, and even now we just started really ramping up ads before that. It was like, I was spending like a thousand dollars a month on ads and generating six figures a month. And that's all organic. And it's because of the party aspect, the tribe aspect. Yeah. So it's just like the podcast, the group and getting that out there. And I think Facebook like group is huge and I get them on my email list from there so I can really be direct with yeah. them. Yeah. And I think like what you said, like start a movement built, you know, focus on that because movement ha and movement has energy to it it's infectious it makes people want to be part of something i always like put say to people like put your stake in the ground what do you stand for what's the heart and soul here what are you really about and be willing to show up to share that message and when you do you will find that people are like attracted to you like you're a magnet and you're pulling people into you because you have literally put your stake in the ground and said hey i'm standing over here this is what i'm believing this is what i'm about if you believe in the same things and come and join and i think that like 
when you go about it, like creating a, a, a movement, it has that power within it. I find there's something magical about it. Like I agree. And we can choose that anytime. So if somebody's listening and they have a business that they just like, they've been stuck in the minutia and they've just been not really showing up in the front end for everyone, we can decide right now to be a magnet. And like, I've, I mean, I like visualize things like that. I have visualized like people just like the floodgates just opening and everyone just pouring in and sharing and talking about me. And like, I'm working on a book right now and I, you bet I'm visualizing like that book being a bestseller everywhere. Like I, that's a, it's all mental. Yeah. And when you do that, how can you go to work the next day and like get your laptop out and like be the same? Yeah. Like you're, you get to choose your energy. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Chris Harder, but he said in a podcast episode once a while ago, and it just stuck with me that like, you are in full control of your energy. So stop saying that like, I'm just so tired. Yeah. Like it was just a long day. Like you can decide to ramp up your energy anytime. And I think that's so empowering. I so decide. I'm a magnet. I'm a success magnet. People are drawn to me. The right kind of women are coming into my business every day. I make, you know, a hundred thousand dollars a month, every month. And I decide that I get to choose to show up for that. And then what's crazy is that when you do that and you're like, and that's it, it's done. I have the energy that I need. I have women coming in to buy my stuff. They can't wait to buy my stuff. Then the next right step just downloads into your brain at the right time. And, and you show up differently. Yeah. I literally couldn't agree with you more. And I feel like, like, I mean, I love woo woo stuff and whatever else but like I feel like um for me when I started FEA I had, did this little challenge myself that I called mission my mission success challenge to see what would be possible if I conditioned myself for success and like if I really kind of could train my brain for success and just up level my life because I was so bloody annoyed of having this wanting to live an amazing life and not living it. I was literally stuck in the mantra, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And I got so fed up on my own crap that one day I just had this day where I just thought I can't do this anymore. And then it was like, right, I'm gonna do this. Like, I'm just gonna figure this out. And I started to do this challenge and then my life started to change. And it kind of, when you're telling your story, it kind of reminded me of my own story for a different reason. But like, I think sometimes there's so much power in it when we, take back control of our lives and we get so intentional about the way we want to live and the way we want to show up and the what we want to create it's just so powerful and like all this like i visualize things all the time like with my book i visualize getting a publishing deal with hay house i visualize speaking on their stage like i would sit in that audience before i was a hay house author and i would visualize that it was me on that stage talking and i would be sat in the audience feeling so nervous because i felt the energy of what it would be like to be stood on that stage and you like behind the scenes about to come out like how would you be feeling? yeah and i think that's it too like i love that we kind of have spilled over into this topic because it is all connected it is all related how can you start a party that nobody wants to leave if you're not in charge of your energy? Yeah. If you're not deciding that you get to be a big deal. Like there, I was pitching people in the beginning and like trying to get people to like, let me do a webinar with them or give value to their audience or something. And people would just not respond. Like no one's going to do this for you. You have to go and get it yourself. Yeah. And so I decided, you know what? I'm, I am going to be a big deal. I'm, I'm just going to, and what would it feel like if I already was, what would it feel like if I was turning down press because I'm too busy? Um, like what would it feel like for my kids to see me on TV? And I would imagine like a movie in my head and say out loud, like, and that's it, it's done because I'm calling it in and that's it. And then, you know, a couple years later, there was a moment where I was scrolling through the TV, trying to find this silly like kitten show for my kids. And I scrolled past the Hallmark channel and there was my feature. They happened to be playing it at the time that we were scrolling. And my daughter was like, is that your name? Click that. And we opened it and they saw it. Like they saw it and they were like, mom, that's amazing. Like in it. And I remembered that I used to visualize that. And even though I had kind of let it go and things had happened and, you know, I felt like I hadn't done a good job and I was not really visualizing that anymore, but I, I did. And it, and I held space for it and it happened. What you think, what you immerse yourself in, the energy you choose to linger in, 
you can bet that's going to show up in your life and in your revenue for sure. So true. And I feel like this is where the magic is in this episode, because while the strategy in the five part party cocktail is so relevant and so important, it has it will not achieve results for somebody if this is not in play in their life in their life and they're not doing this stuff and I know it because like the past couple of years I have been sat in a different energy and I can feel the impact and I know when I'm in the flow and I've got a really good energy going and like for example recently I've been doing I literally got so fed up of my own crap I got so fed up of constantly feeling overwhelmed and stuck and Like, I literally would repeat phrases in my head and out loud to people like, I feel like I'm pushing water up a hill, I'm trying to get blood out of a stone, I'm in quicksand, I'm in like, I'm stuck in mud. Honestly, these phrases would just come out of my mouth all the time. And And, um, also, these phrases are all very visual. So you're literally, like your subconscious is literally picturing that and the, like, the, the pictures are so powerful for your brain. Yeah. So like cementing that for yourself. Seriously. So I was like, literally carry get a grip you know better than this and so I did my I created this little challenge for myself I call it my little show up and shine challenge and I just went back to basics with like what I know to be true and like the kind of stuff I did when I first started FEA and like even in such a short space of time like things started to happen like big decisions just began to happen with more ease and like things arose like people saying oh can you be do you want to be on my podcast oh do you want to be part of this and like stuff started happening that hadn't been happening in such a long time and you like you said when you are in that energy and you kind of have visualized and you've kind of created that container of energy for yourself of what you want the downloads come and then like those sparks happen and you feel so good in yourself and it's like you when you sit in that energy you get that the pathway unfolds in ways you could never have foreseen but it's like if you're not sat in that energy it is like you're trying to push and push and push and nothing's really moving and nothing's really happening and um i think that's the magic of then you go you're you get frustrated and you go deeper and deeper and deeper into that energy and we have to remember that it is a choice and you know what i get messaged when i say this Every time I get messages like, well, that's easy for you to say, because they just like heard me on some podcast where I'm making like $250,000 months on $99 product or whatever. And it's like, you are forgetting the time when I was standing in my driveway in the mountains of Arkansas. I'm a SoCal girl, okay? (laughs) And I hated my life and I had nothing. And we were literally trying to figure out like how to get enough money for food. And I stood in the driveway and I chose my energy and I decided what was going to happen in my life and I called it in and and believed with certainty like it's mine because I say it is because I'm created in the image of the almighty the almighty creator himself and I have that power too and I'm done ignoring it and I'm done letting my life happen at me and to me and I'm going to take ownership and I decide that I have all the energy I need to be an incredible mom an amazing wife and an awesome badass business owner. I'm a movement maker and an empirist. I'm going to embody that energy. And when I did that, mountains moved, virality happened, money. I literally woke up the next day with $25,000 in my PayPal account and we were viral and I had never seen that kind of money. And so that's not overnight success. That's a ton of uphill struggle that was unnecessary. And the second I stopped and just decided that I get to have what the life I want to have, it happened like that. And that's how easy it can be. Yeah. I just love it so much. I just hope that everyone listening is like, I am going to decide, I'm ready to decide that this is like that this is my life that I'm gonna make it the best life ever that I'm gonna create so much success and often when I'm doing like hot seats with people and talking with people it's like they're holding themselves so uh, holding themselves back so much and I'm like who you need to decide who you need to be and you need to decide with conviction that you are gonna be that person and you're gonna show up as that leader or whoever it is that you want to be and it's like sometimes we're just too afraid to like let ourselves be that like open ourselves up to be that person but yeah. That is definitely where the magic happens. Ali, that's so exciting. I'm just, I'm so glad that we ended up talking about all this stuff because I just personally cool. love it and it just makes all the difference. But thank you for coming and sharing all of that and sharing the strategy and sharing the woo-woo stuff. It's just all so good. Um, and yeah, I'm excited for everyone listening to go and take action on it all and to put this into practice because it's Me life-changing. Too. I want to hear about it too. If you guys are doing something like tag me message me i want i love hearing when people like 
I feel like I get to give the shortcut to that aha moment that took me way too long to figure out, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I totally agree. Uh, yeah, I totally agree. Shortcuts are good. Um, for everyone listening, if you want to go to the show notes and check out everything that Ali's got going on, head over to femaleentrepreneurassociation.com forward slash Ali, A-L-L-I-E. And, um, and then also, um, for everyone listening and or watching, um, would you just be able to share like where people can find you most easily? Yeah, um, to connect with me, I would say Instagram is the easiest. Um, you can search Ali Casaza there, or my username is Ali underscore that's me. And just send me a message or tag me or comment or something. I'm, I'm in there all the time and my team helps me a little bit, but I do see the messages and I would love to hear from you and connect with you. And um, obviously if you need help with your life and simplifying, you can go to alicasaza.com. Amazing, thank you so much. It's been inspiring Great. for sure. Um, and I really hope you have all enjoyed listening and, um, make sure you subscribe if you want to, don't, if you don't want to miss a future episode, because I feel like they're always such good conversations. It's always so good. Um, anyway, thank you, Ali. And thank you everyone for listening. And I will see you next week. Bye everyone.